No Panic Zone. I'm Steve Kerr. I'm America's Voice. I'm an America First guy. And let me be clear. I'm here to tell you the truth, not to make you feel good like my dad would say. So here we go. Let's get into the three big things you need to know right now. Number one, the investigation of the Supreme Court leak of the Dobbs case that overturned Roe v. Wade has wrapped up without a suspect being named. Are you really surprised? I'm not. The White House and the Department of Justice agreed to bury Joe Biden's document debacle and subsequent scandal, but that was before the leak that sent them into a full-blown panic. Number three, the inmates have broken out of the asylum and gathered in Davos, Switzerland, and the crazy part is that anyone takes them seriously. The World Economic Forum and its leader, Klaus Schwab, don't care about you or what you think. We've covered it all week and we'll continue to do it right now. You see, Schwab and his cronies that flew in on their private jets from the ivory towers they live in all over the world gathered to chart the future of the world. That's what they think of themselves. One where America is not an important beacon of freedom because freedom won't really matter anymore by then. And we will have shifted to stakeholder capitalism, which is, by the way, just a rebranding of socialism and communism. Here's a new package with a shiny new label. Stakeholder capitalism. The result... The result will still be the same, equitable misery. Except, of course, for Schwab and his friends dining on the finest meats and cheeses, eating seafood, downing vintage bottles of wine, and bragging about what jet they flew there in, and the latest motor car they just put in their private collections. And no, it's not an EV. Some of them are apparently buying some high-class hookers that have descended on Davos this week, too, for entertainment, proving that at least some of them are not just media whores. We'll get back to that one in a bit. I wonder if they thought Hunter was flying in. Anyway, the seriousness of this whole production should not be dismissed. These people are serious, and they're ruthless. And they know exactly what they want. They're dangerous. And what they want is everything. They want it all. Let's start with the man out front. He'll tell you exactly what he wants. Klaus Schwab thinks you should trust all this monitoring of you the surveillance of your every move on cameras and digital devices because the International Law Enforcement Agency, Interpol, is going to work with the WEF to take care of you. Boy, this should make you feel good about things. Listen. I think what what is essential is to make sure that um, the system as such, uh, the technology, uh, can be trusted. And... um, um, one of the on one of the village partner, for example, is Interpol. So we work together already um, with the necessary instances to make sure that the system is as safe as it can as it can be. Yeah, I'm a believer. Seems safe to me. Why not? Yeah, Klaus Schwab there. I mean, could you create a better villain if you're setting out to make a cartoon villain? Could you do a better job? Yeah, there is. We'll make Interpol. We'll make it safe. We shall trust the technology, Z. We have ways to monitor you, but it'll be safe. Now shut up, peasant. (laughs) Klaus Schwab says America will not be a superpower anymore, but rather the World Economic Forum will be running things with a group of nations. Using the poison pill, like I said, of what they call stakeholder capitalism. Simply central planning and socialism under a brand new name, a brand new marketing campaign. It is garbage, but it is dangerous. Yeah. Listen to this. On the one hand, we have uh, state capitalism. On the other hand, we have shareholder or private capitalism. So it's a clash between two systems. I, I believe that... Um, State capitalism in the short term, in the short term, provides certain advantages because you can mobilize in a concentrated way a lot of resources to reach a specific objective. But I believe that the future is not state capitalism or shareholder capitalism. The future is what I call stakeholder capitalism which um, is combined with the social responsibility. Yeah, combined with the social responsibility, so you can mobilize all of the resources, which you do that how? By government control of those resources. The intense focus on pulling the plug on energy worldwide is really one of the most disturbing aspects coming out of Davos as well. Of course, it's something they've been spewing since the late 1980s, early 1990s. They've dedicated themselves to the cultist push that we must go green. 
But they avoid the real question about how that would look, who would suffer ultimately. But let me assure you, it will not be these pigs gathered at the trough of humanity, feeding on the wealth they steal from billions of people around the world daily. The World Economic Forum and its leaders and devotees will never suffer the way the serfs will. You see, they're clearly too sophisticated to be dragged down by the likes of you or me. The dregs of society, that's what we are to them. They believe they are above the fray. They are also on the payroll of several other people that could not possibly care less about you, your family, your country, or your future. These people are truly dangerous. I believe that. Meanwhile, the United Nations Secretary General continues to do the bidding of Klaus Schwab and the Chinese Communist Party, attacking energy companies and blaming them for issues far beyond their control. Listen to this. We are flirting with climate disaster. Every week brings a new climate horror story. Greenhouse gas emissions are at record levels and growing. The commitment to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees is nearly going up in smoke. Without further action, we are headed to a 2.8 degree increase. And the consequences, as we all know, would be devastating. Several parts of our planet would be uninhabitable, and for many, it will mean a death sentence. Yeah, and of course, the use of hydrocarbons that they call fossil fuels means we're all going to die. But this kind of dire prediction of the end of the world never comes true. These cult members will find out very soon that the predicted end of the world simply will not happen. These grifters just keep pushing out the prediction farther and farther and farther while bringing in billions of dollars in political donations. I mean, make no mistake, this whole climate change thing is the greatest generator of political money ever. One more comment from the UN Secretary General, listen. Today, fossil fuel producers and their enablers are still racing to expand production, knowing full well that this business model is inconsistent with human survival. Now, this insanity belongs in science fiction, yet we know the ecosystem meltdown is cold, hard scientific fact. Yeah, okay. Inconsistent with human survival. Do they, do they understand the human being as designed is a tropical species? That's why we wear clothes. That's why we have furnaces. That's why we have heat. Do they understand this simple idea? Clearly not. Uh, the whole thing here is a bunch of grifters. But what's frightening is the sheep that are going along as they all head to the cliff. It is truly frightening. These people are the most, da these people are the existential threat to this country, to Western civilization. You know it and so do I. More from Davos in just a moment. Thank you.